Now we are going to briefly discuss the different option Greeks. So first I will take you across through the formulas. What are the formulas associated with these Greeks? And how to use them? We will see in the practice session. And it is highly essential to understand the Greeks as an option trader. You must understand this Greeks. Without this, it is very difficult to form a strategy. So the Greek starts with the delta. So delta says the rate of change of option premium with respect to the change in the underlying asset price. So the stock or index which is the underlying asset, if that changes by 1 rupee, how much rupee impact it will bring in the call option or put option. So that is called your delta. And the delta of a call option is explained as exponential to the power of rate of interest into time. Time must be in years and normal distribution of D1. And the delta of a put option which is exponential to the power rate of interest into time into normal distribution of D1 minus 1. Similarly, the second Greek is known as theta. So this explains the rate of change of option premium in the rupee term with respect to change in the time, the time value decay. So here this is explained as stock price into N dash D1. So one new term we are introducing here N dash D1 into volatility. And this should be divided by 2 into square root of time. So 2 multiple of square root of time minus rate of interest into strike price into EX exponential to the power of rate of rate of interest into time into normal distribution of D2. This N dash D1 is expressed as 2 divided by square root of 2 pi into exponential to the power D square by 2. So this is the N dash D1 formula. So this is represented as theta and rate of change of option premium at what rate it should change with respect to in rupee term with respect to the change in the time. So that is known as your theta. Similarly rho, so rho explains the change in option price with respect to change in the interest rate. If the interest rate is changing with 1% or 2%. Likewise, how it will impact the option price. So normally, this row has very limited impact in the stock and index options. Whenever you will be trading in the interest rate future and interest rate options, that time row has a great role to play. So it is explained as time period multiplied with the strike multiplied with exponential to the power rate of interest into time into normal distribution of D2. This is for the call option and for put option it will be minus D2 and it will be negative. So rho of the put option must be negative. Then the next Greek is gamma. One by one we will work out all these formulas. So gamma says rate of change of delta with respect to the underlying asset price. So how the delta will change with respect to the underlying asset price change. So this is explained as 
n dash d1 divided by stock price into volatility into square root of time. So that is known as your gamma. The next Greek is Vega which is purely associated with the volatility and it is one of the most important Greek in our Greek domain. So this says that change in the option price with respect to change in the volatility. So what kind of rationality the volatility holds with the option premium. So that is known as your Vega. So after this translation of Vega, we have one more term which is often ignored by many option trader but it is one of the best Greek which I used to find out in the Greek literature. So here option Greek literature I can rather say. So this is called Ohm. So this says that percentage change in the option premium with each 1% change in the asset price. I can rather say you may ignore most of the Greeks, however you cannot ignore the Greek Ohm which is percentage change in the option premium with each 1% change in the asset price it represents. So this is explained as the stock price, the underlying asset price multiplied with delta divided by the premium. option premium and how the delta, how the ohm behaves. Ohm of the call option is always greater than or equal to 1 and it decreases as the strike price increases. Ohm of the put option is always less than 0 and it must be negative. So that also decreases once the strike price decreases. And with respect to this ohm, you can find out the volatility of the option. Volatility of the option which is expressed as your implied volatility, the volatility associated in the option premium is known as your implied volatility. This is also one of the formulae which is direct formulae I can rather say which is used by the traders or the option analysts to identify the volatility of the option or the implied volatility which is volatility of the stock multiplied with absolute value of the ohm. If ohm is negative, you have to take positive always because it is absolute value. Absolute value means all the negative things will be converted to positive. So stock volatility multiplied with the absolute value of the ohm. So this will give you the option volatility. This is also known as the elasticity of the option. So volatility is the elasticity of the stock and by this process if you are finding out the volatility then it is called as your elasticity of the options. So I have explained almost all the formulas so one by one we will work out. So we will start from the delta. So we will take the delta formula here. So delta, theta, gamma, everything we will find out in the excel sheet. <clears throat> so here I am just giving you delta and the formulas what we have written in that sheet I have just copied it and and 
let me so this delta formula for call option exponential to the power rate of interest into time so here let me write it here so I have to take the exp function exponential to the power of rate of interest which I have already taken as 12 percent and this must be multiplied with the time must be in year so let me put one bracket for the time so inside this the timing part will be calculated so time must be in year so 14 days are taken so this is 365 days we are dividing so this is exponential to the power minus r into t the rate of interest must be negative so exponential part is over now we will multiply it with normal distribution of norms dist of norms dist of d1 so d1 already we have calculated and previous lecture i have already explained the formula of d1 so this is what our delta is delta is 0.629791 it is not in the percentage term so this says delta is 0.629791 means if the stock is changed by 1 rupee the option should change by 1.6297.91 in the absolute value term. So this is the thing it is saying. The increment in the stock price by 1 rupee should invite 1 rupee 60 paisa change in the option. Similarly, the decrement by 1 rupee will bring the option or reduce the option price by 1 rupee 60 paisa so this is what the delta signifies once we found out the delta similarly we have to find out the delta of the put option so delta of the put option says that same way we will take the exponential exponential function the rate of interest into time so time as I told you we have to put it in a bracket because we want the time to be in number of years so so we are getting time in terms of days so we have converted it to in terms of years so after converting it to in terms of years so we got the delta the exponential function part is over so this must be minus r into t and after this we need to multiply it with the normal distribution of d1 normal distribution nums dist of d1 or else the call option delta you just subtract by 1 so you will get and minus 1 we have to do it this will give us the delta of the foot option so delta of the foot option here the strike price is 6200 underlying asset is 6237 and we have got the delta of call option and the delta of put option so i will just delete the formula here we will rather write here delta call and delta put delta put so this is the thing we have got it now the next part theta so this is the theta formula so we'll take the formula to our worksheet and we'll do the working there so that it should be in front of our eyes so so here i'm just putting the formulas so so the call option and call option and put option so so here the call option and put option t 
theta we have to find out so I am just reducing its font size so that it should be visible and I am just reducing its font size so and this part also let me reduce so that it must be visible so here call option and put option and theta we are finding out so theta of call option and put option so d1 and d2 is already in our hand so only one new term we need to find out which is n dash d d so here n dash d1 we are using so this will be n dash d1 so n dash d1 first let us find out this factor so n dash d1 which is 2 divided by here one bracket is main bracket is required because inside that main bracket everything will reside so here so inside the main bracket square root of 2 into so pi constant is there so pi is nothing but 22 by 7 so 22 by 7 comes to 3.142857 so this is so 2 into pi so 3.142857142.85 I can take so this is the value of pi pi is nothing but 22 divided by 7 so it's a constant so we have got the square root of 2 pi that we have found out now the next part is we have to find out the exponential d square by 2 so we have taken exponential function so this 2 also should be kept inside a bracket and this must be exponential to the power so e to the power d square by 2 so here d1 we require so d1 already we have found out and we will take the square of this and divide it by 2 so square of this one we have taken so for the safety sake it is better this is squaring term we should put inside one bracket so the square should be found first then it must be divided by 2 but it is not required but sometimes some excel sheets used to give the problem for that reason only we have done it so exponential minus d square by 2 which we have done and and after this we will get this n dash d1 once this n dash d1 is found by us then we have to go for theta of call option theta of call option so which is theta of call option stock price first let us choose the price of this underlying asset into n dash d1 already found out into volatility so volatility is already here so volatility is already here so after this thing so we should close it close or keep entire thing inside one basket one parenthesis is required so it must be negative and this entire quantity should be divided by the factors like 2 into square root of time so time must be in years so 14 divided by 365 this I have done then I have to subtract it from the rate of interest so rate of interest is here this must be multiplied with the strike price this is here and this must be multiplied with exponential to the power to the power of minus rate of interest minus rate of interest into time so for time always I used to suggest put a bracket and inside the bracket do the calculation 14 divided by 365 
and once the timing work is over so once the timing work is over you should should close this part of your bracket so that this exponential function also got closed so 2 square root of t minus this multiplication rate of interest into strike exponential is over now the normal distribution part is left out so norms dist norms dist of your d1 we have taken and once this work is over the entire norms dist work is over so this the original bracket which has started from here from the 2 into square root of time so this must be closed and now you got the theta of the call option is 1.87 so theta of the put option we require so same values same values and and same values except the changes will come this rate of interest this factor should be added and n dash of d2 should be taken minus d2 should be taken so so normal distribution of d2 must be taken so here is the d2 so so this is the thing we have done previously i have taken the d1 that's why it was giving the error so this part once it is over let us copy this formula because for the put option also we require theta of the put option so theta of the put option having the same formula the exception is this d, d2 must be negative and this factor which we have subtracted before we need to add it so this factor we need to add and the first factor of negativeness stock price into n dash d1 into volatility it will remain as it is and now we will get the theta of the put option so theta of put option we got so the theta definition already rate of change of the option premium with respect to change in the time so time value decay per day so every day with respect to the expiry once we are approaching towards the expiry based on this underlying value and the strike price we got this conception with each one day time lapse the call option has the probability to increase by 1 rupee 91 paisa put option has the probability to decay by 3 rupees and 12 paisa so this is not the percentage this is the direct value so each one day we near towards the expiry the call option has a probability to increase by 1 rupee 91 paisa and the put option has the probability to decay by 3 rupees 12 paisa and the strike is corresponding to 6200 put so this is what the theta says now we will move on to the next part which is rho gamma and vega so rho says change in the option price with the change in the interest rate so this part is quite simple and this i am just avoiding because we are not trading in the interest rate options and it is just straightforward formula time multiplied with the strike exponential to the power rate of interest into time into normal distribution of d2 then we will focus on the gamma rate of change of delta with respect to underlying asset price change so the gamma formula let us copy this one and already this is theta part is over so let us delete this formula and and because the space can be utilized for other things and n dash d1 we require this factor henceforth that let it be so so this says that n dash d1 divided by stock price into volatility into square root of time so this is the thing it is asking us for 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 the purpose of gamma rate of change of delta with respect to underlying asset price so so gamma is here so we need to find out 
So n dash d1 we require, so n dash d1 we have taken because this thing we have already calculated and the stock price, this is the stock price and we need to take the volatility into account. So volatility is here and we have to take square root of the time. So time is here. So the 14 days time must be divided into years. So once this thing is over, entire thing should be closed. So gamma. So rate of change of the delta with respect to the with respect to the underlying asset price. So if asset price is getting changed by one unit, so gamma will change by the delta will change by 0 0.004142. This says that if asset is changed by plus one, then the delta will change by the delta of the call option which is here. So this must be increased by this many. So if the asset price is decreased by one rupee, then the delta should fall by in this extent, delta of the call option should be fall by 0 0.004142 in the realistic value term. So this is what it says. So gamma work is over. So let us delete this formula for gamma. So this is the gamma part is over. So we have found out delta, theta, gamma and, and rho which is associated with the interest rate that we have avoided because we are not trading in the we are not trading in the interest rate options. Now come to the Vega term. So Vega formula we will take. So this is as I as I told you this Vega is a essential Greek of your calculation. Change in the option price with respect to change in the volatility. This is a very, very essential term. You must not ignore the Vega term. Change in the option price with respect to change in the volatility. So this is what it says. So Vega option price and with respect to the change in the option price with respect to the change in volatility. So this is what the Vega says. So for that we have to take the square root of the stock price at, what, at which it is trading and we should multiply it, multiply it with the square root of time. So this should be in terms of years. So this is done square root of time then multiplied with n dash d1. So n dash d1 already you have found out here. So n dash d1 2 by square root of 2 pi into exponential d1 whole square minus d1 whole square by 2. So this we have taken half of the d1 square. So so this is once this is done we will be getting a term like 1032. So the stock price multiplied with the square root of time into n dash d1. So this is what the Vega is and you must be thinking that how I can apply this big term in my trade. So what does this 1032 is representing for me? So this is, this Vega can be used in a different way. It should be used in a different way. So volatility which is you can say 16.7.167 so volatility is you can say I am using current volatility it's 16.7 so once this volatility increases by 1% 1% so so in mathematical term if we can say 1% stands for 1 divided by 100 so volatility should be so it is in the 0 0.01 so increment 1% means 0 0.01 increment so if this increases by 
0 0.01 unit then this option premium will increase by <coughs> vega multiplied with this 0 0.01 so 10 rupees 32 paisa increment you can get in the value of the call option and put option both together you can say value of the call option will go up by 10 10.32 value of the put option will go up by 10.32 if the volatility is going up by 1% similarly if the volatility is falling down by 1% from the current level of 16.7 to 15.7 the value of the call option will fall down by 10 rupees 32 paisa the value of the put option will fall down by 10 rupees 32 paisa so this maintaining the time till expiry remains same during the day if the volatility falls then this thing is going to happen if the time till expiry also reducing with respect to the fall in the volatility then the context of vega will be entirely different so the vega always you will get in a great term based on the strike price the vega will be a and the option premium vega will be a big term you should translate the vega in this way 1% means 0 0.01 you need change in the volatility which will bring the 0 0.01 times of vega unit changes in the option premium so this is what the vega says so so vega term is over and this Vega is common for both call and put. So both call and put is having the common Vega. And Gamma it is associated with the Delta. So, so associated with the Delta so it will have different values. So Delta of the call option and Delta of put options are different. So this must be different this must be different so 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 this is this is what your vega stands for so now we can move into the next next greek which is ohm so this is also known as your elasticity elasticity of the option so this is represented as the stock price multiplied with the delta divided by the option premium so stock price multiplied with delta divided by the option premium so this is what the ohm stands for and the symbols you are viewing there so ohm so if you are a science student most probably you would have heard about this term ohm so ohm is representing your units of current so 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 this is the stock price we'll choose and we'll multiply it with the delta if you want the call option delta so so this must be divided with the premium of the call option this is what the ohm is so 33.32 is the ohm it is suggesting and ohm of the put option we can find out stock price stock price we will choose then sorry so I have to choose the stock price here multiplied with the delta of put option delta of put option divided by the put premium so it must be negative so so delta of the call option and delta of the put option so so that that is uh, counted here so this has said that the call option ohm must be greater than equal to 1 and put option always it will be less than 0 so it must be negative 
put options ohm and call option ohms will be always positive so this says that percentage change in the option premium with 1% change in the asset price so this says this gives you a very fantastic parameter so very very fantastic parameter it is giving you so this ohm is giving you each 1% change in the asset price will bring the change of 33% 33% change in the option call option price and each 1% rise in this option rise in this underlying price will bring a 44% decay in the put option price so this is what it says each 1% rise will bring 33% gain in the call option price each 1% fall will bring 44% gain in the put option price so with respect to each 1% change in the underlying asset price how much percentage change the call option or put option can give us so this parameter is very very essential if you are a intraday trader if you are a positional strategic trader so each time you may not get each 1% change so similarly you can say if the stock price or this context if the stock price changes by 0.25 how much changes it will bring so now there is a straightforward formula for calculating the implied volatility so implied volatility let us calculate so what is the implied volatility of the call option so so this is the volatility of underlying asset we have taken multiplied with absolute value of the ohm so ohm is here so this is the multiplication of this ohm so so absolute so this must be multiplied with 100 because the previous volatility I have taken in the absolute term so we can say so volatility of the volatility of the call option or put option is 16.7 so 16.7 so this must be taken in the absolute term so so this is the so 16 point point one six seven multiplied with ohm so ohm value so this is the 5.56 percent yes this is in the percentage term so this 33 is already in the percentage term so this says that the call option or put option are having a volatility implied volatility of 5.56 percent and this if you will take the implied volatility of the put option so this says that underlying asset multiplied with the absolute so so here we have to take 44.0724 this is the absolute value so 7.36 it is coming here 7.36 the implied volatility and this is here 5.56 is the implied volatility though this is a straightforward formula this is the volatility associated with the option but often traders never use this formula it has some problem in it because implied volatility definition says it cannot be calculated through backward computation method implied volatility must not be calculated from the backward competition computation method henceforth all direct formulae muller subramanian's formulae or this volatility associated with this ohm formulae must not be used while forming any practical option strategy in the market so though this is the theoretically 
correct. It is theoretically good to write this formula for your purpose of passing any examination. However, in the practical field, these two formulas, Muller Subramanian's formula and this one, never get used. So we have the because this is through backward computation, we cannot do this implied volatility. So uh, we have to use the stochastic approach. Through stochastic approach only, we can find out the implied volatility. So this is what is your delta, theta, gamma, vega, and ohm. So part of rho I have ignored. The reason is we have to we are we are trading in the index or stock options interest rate options we are not interested in so that is why i have ignored that so we have understood the delta theta gamma vega and ohm terms so it has been taken from the reference price point of 6237 so price never used to be in constant place so price is a changing quantity so price will never ever remain in one place so price has to change so it has to go up or it has to fall down so whenever the prices will change in the upward direction or downward direction it will definitely affect this delta theta gamma, vega and ohm. So all these terms will be get affected once the price is changing. So because change in the price it is a fact of the market so we cannot control that. However, for each price changing point in your upward or downward moment point if you if you wish to you can calculate this delta theta, gamma, etc. So here I have taken some simple approach of WD GAN. So here 6237 I am saying that 30 degree above price point it is 6263 then next 60 degree then it is 90 degree it may go in this order or it may fall down in the 30 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree fashion. So so this is the degree terms of support and resistances that you can find in the GAN literature. So these are the expected price of the up move or down move. And this calculation is happening in Black and Scholes model. And delta of each, each up move point and each down move point, I have calculated the delta of call option and put option. And once you will find out, once the price is moving up in the upward journey, delta of the call option is going on increasing. Once the prices are started falling, then the delta of the put call option is started falling. So, and delta will go maximum till 1. So, we have the reference points like this way. The delta of future contract it is always 1. So delta of call option it varies from 0 to 1 and the delta of put option so this varies from 0 to minus 1. So 0 to minus 1 it varies. So this is 0 to minus 1. So this is the variation of your delta of a put option and 0 to plus 1 this is the variation of your delta of a call option. So using this parameter at particular time we can get the delta of a call option, put option and the delta of the future is always 1. So using this parameter we can form the delta neutral strategy. We can form the delta neutral strategy. So not only with the future call and put option we can form the delta neutral strategy with combination of call and put option. So sometime it may be 
recommending us to buy specific number of call option and sell specific number of call of put option or buy some call option and put option of opposite order like this way we can we can we can form the delta neutral strategy so take take a very small example so take this part as your this part as your reference part so so assume assume that your your underlying asset is at 6263 so underlying asset is 6263 and 6200 call option it is quoting at 135 rupees and 6200 put option it is quoting at 43 rupees so whatever we are getting in this calculator assume that same thing is present in the market it is just an assumption it may vary so so realistic examples we will take during the practice session so assume this is the fact of the market so we have got delta of the call option so so delta of delta of the call option which is saying that it is at 0.6769 positive delta of the put option it's 0.32 negative so if i wish to form a delta neutral strategy so what i should do so if i am buying a call option buying a call option of one lot so one lot call option i am buying so my delta is this one the net delta is 0.6769 if i am buying two lots of put option so simultaneously i am purchasing two lots of put option so my delta stands at this one so it's almost zero level so i am at a 0 0.030 is the level almost zero level i am bringing it to my strategy so i have bought two put options one call option and this has resulted almost neutral point of the delta so what will happen what will happen if the price is going to 6316 so 6316 level what will be the delta value so this is the price point if it is coming then what will be the delta value so delta of the call option call option will be 0.76 at this point of time and the delta of the put options will be this one multiplied with 2 so so delta which was which was almost at a neutral level here now this delta has become somewhat positive and it has come to this positive stage so it was at a neutral level here 0 0.03 and it has increased and come to 0.28 level so what is the impact it has brought in the price term so I have bought in the 135 level and it is now gone to 173 level so so this is the 135 and 43 and this is 173 and 28.75 so let us let us see the call option again so call option is giving me this minus this one so one unit of call option is giving me 38 unit of price gain so i have put options too so which i have bought at this one 43 level it is at 28 level now so 28 minus 43 level so this i have made it and two units i have so i can say that it has it is giving me so so it is giving me 29 units of losses so once the delta from neutral it has become positive i am at a gain of nine units so so this is at a neutral point you should initiate and once the delta will approach towards its maximum value of plus one or minus one once the delta 
you have to initiate a strategy at delta neutral means at a delta zero level position once the delta goes to a plus one or minus one level so you will your profit will come so from neutral if it expands to plus one you are at profit from neutral if it expands to minus one you will be at profit so that is what the called your delta neutral strategy so while forming the strategy you take care in such a way that your net delta should be at near zero level then after if the delta expands to plus one level or minus one level you will be at a profit and that you can form in any combination buying any call selling any call buying any put selling any put buying any future or selling any future so you form in the, in such a way that the delta should be neutral then after the future will decide where the delta is swinging in whether it is going to the positive side of plus one or negative side of minus one once it swings to either of this level you will be at a profit that is called your delta neutral strategy more about this strategy we will explore in the practice session and with this i remain on the topic of option greeks